and looked at him. Yeah. Eva looked at him and said, "Dance, Charlie." <laughs> He's got the most of us. Yeah. yeah. She said, dance, Charlie. <laughs> like, baby, I don't know what you want me to do, but it is not happening on this uh, beautiful no. day. Yep. No. <laughs> she was like, dance. Uh, I can't, like, can't that while I dance. <laughs> like, dance. dance. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> All right, family. So, yes, today, so Peter was just saying, wow, I stepped out. So now you can just jump on into it, my brother. Here you go. And I'm going to actually just direct the camera while y'all have the conversation. How about that? That'd be, that'd okay, be so I'm going to jump out. I, I apologize for talking while the music was on. I, I didn't know the rules. Now I know. Jazz. <laughs> so so like we were saying, now nah, nah, on a serious note, I was just complimenting the oh, brother. Go ahead. I'm done. Go ahead. You good? Yeah. All right. So I was, just, I was just thanking the brother for, you know, coming up and, you know, the sister here we were talking about the St. Rock market and what it used to be and how they used to get it in. You know, I'm from that area. You know, I stay around there now. And uh, we used to frequent the the, uh, the St. Rock market a lot back in the day, right? And it was like a staple of the community. So we were just talking about, you know, how, how honored I am to see that he has a niche. You know, he has a place in that, in, that, in that establishment. And what I found interesting, I didn't even know that statistically speaking, the demographics in that space now. I just know initially when they opened it up, they didn't have any people of color. That, that had a, that operated businesses in there, from my understanding, right? So now, brother. So just tell the people why this was this conversation was a piece because you know we got new people who are just tuning in, so you got to let them know why we talk about the same rock. You know what I'm saying? Oh, because because you wasn't in here and it was my turn to, to uh, make no, up what we was going to talk about. No, because his restaurant mm -hmm. is in the St. Rock building. I'm digging your nose on air. <laughs> uh, you heard that, huh? How? I see if I say that, and she says she she denying it. Man, you, you, you scared me a little bit, man. Why don't you sit down? So like I was saying, man, my brother got a nice little establishment in the spot. And I can only see it from, 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 from Kendra and, and from what they're speaking on, because to be honest, I hadn't, I hadn't been there yet. But I'm definitely looking forward to coming to your establishment. So instead of me spending a lot of time talking about it, you take the mic and let us know what we have going on. But, but just know that I salute the endeavor because, I mean, it, it, take, it takes a lot of effort to be a groundbreaker right. and Much bring in a whole it. different culture to that area like yeah. you do, man. Yeah, yeah, we, we need more people like you coming in there, you know? Indeed. If, if you do, then it uh, changes the whole atmosphere, you know what I no mean? Shade. You know, no it's, shade. It, it has a community. We're, we're building it slowly and surely. But like you said in, in the beginning, it was hairy. Um, and like, you know, and we can easily understand why um, there was a lot of anger towards the St. Rock market and what it, what it became versus what it was. Um, but you know the city gave these people an opportunity to turn this into a food hall, mm -hmm. and you know to, to create, try to create something new, and that, that's what they did. At the moment, at every single point of it, they actually only, always had at least one black owner, but okay, one out of okay. thirteen it really ain't ain't nothing yeah, anyway. So that's whatever. But um, you know we always do um, you know things to actually bring in people. Like we always, we try to keep our prices as low as we can. We're always like the lowest people, the cheapest people in the market. Just because we want to invite the community in and keep them in there, um, we're always doing type of community-based uh, activities or things, you know, like fundraisers or things like that, to just to bring people in. Um, and we like that. We're always trying to talk to people and the owners, and we're constantly having conversations, how to like you know include the minorities or more women or whatever it needs to, you know, whatever feels offset. We always try to talk about it because. That's our job, you know what I mean? Like, right. you know, because ain't nobody, ain't no other black people who are, like, you know, as high as us, then it's our job to actually speak for them, you know what I mean? Because no the same, buses right. can say something, but they ain't going to be really listening to the buses or dishwashers. They're going to listen to us more, so. you got to sit at the table, in other words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's very important, man. That's, you know, that's how we get in. That's how we start to change, you know, getting and, that and seat it, at the table. And the thing that we like to do on the community bulletin board is get the community support behind y'all and let the community know that they have people like yourself, mm -hmm. you know, like y'all, too, that's actually sitting there that's trying to maintain integrity, mm -hmm. trying to maintain a certain degree of balance and equity. equity. Mm -hmm. And it's... You know what I mean? I can say that it's nearly impossible to try and do that and make money at the same time, you know what I mean? But, right. you know, it's That's it's why we're here, man, to see if we can get the word to the community, let them know to come out. So exactly. tell a little bit about the establishment. I know it's a Haitian-based restaurant. I mean, uh -huh. you talked about serving breakfast, you saw, you know, lunch, and I'm, I mean, yeah, so we, we all, opened so up, us about it, almost, about, almost about two years ago. Um, Indeed. And we came here from Boston two and a half years ago. Eva and I met in Boston. 
Okay. And uh, when we came here, we, we worked for about six months as a server, and we realized that, you know, we wanted something more than that. We really know that we wanted our own kind of brick-and-mortar establishment. Mm -hmm. So we were looking for places. We find that opportunity at the St. Rock Market, and they picked us up really quickly with the idea of making Haitian food. Um, in the beginning, we try to go like a little more straightforward with our Haitian food, but realize that like we need something that can bridge New, or New Orleanians and Haitians. And even though we get a lot of tourists, like our keys are still our regulars. Like, you know, you make a lot of tourist money in the spring, but um, you know, in the summer and fall, that's all locals. So they're pretty much the most important people, they are. anyways, to support us because like once the tourist season comes and goes, like the people that really, you know take care of us are our regulars or the people that are um, local to the community. Uh, I, oh. <laughs> no, no, in the movie. Uh, no, no, I also think that it's important to note that something like the St. Rock Market, even though it may have started on um, controversial grounds, um, I think it's important to note that um, they do make it like affordable and accessible for people like us or local people to, you know, get their feet on the ground and um, flesh out this concept and have their own business. You know? think, so like yeah. anyone who's listening, like you, this is um, like an opportunity that's available, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, if we get in there and with the right things and being conscious about who we're hiring, that we are hiring local people mm -hmm. um, and that we're, you know, uh, providing a space to grow and learn skills and stuff like that. Uh, there's, you know, a lot of, Potential with that. Mm -hmm. I think. That's, that's the most yeah. important thing, right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah just as y'all speak, you know, just make different statements. Yeah, I just kind of pass the mic back and forth. We definitely want to hear everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean, because y'all have so much to share. Yeah. And we thank y'all for, for the like the, the philosophy behind what y'all are doing, but we definitely want to know exactly what I can come eat, man. Oh, okay, what yeah, yeah. 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 is Haitian totally. food? All right, brother. so Haitian yeah. food is a mix of like very similar to New Orleanian style food, a mix of French and Spanish um, with African all mixed in together. Okay. Um, so that's where we get like our, you know, the big similar uh, other countries who are very similar to us is like Cubans, Dominicans, Haitians. They cook very similar types like plantains, mm. um, fried pork. They all have rice and beans, you know, they all has like a, a tomato based type of Creole sauce, which New Orleans, New Orleanians have. But, uh, you know, our most signature item there is a free Thai sandwich. And we took the flavors of Haiti and then put it between two fried plantains. So we take two fried plantains. You add avocado, oh uh, roasted God. pork, spicy relish, and a mango green onion sauce. And that's the sandwich. And then we do plantain chips and um, avocado dip on the side. Y'all had Kendrick clutching up pearls over I here when y'all so mentioned good. that dish, man. That must be your I favorite, know. I said. No, my chicken, the chicken sandwich. The Creole, see, she knows the Creole fried chicken is my sandwich. Or the, the mac and cheese. So, yeah, see, little people, re, people really don't understand that Haitians actually make baked mac and cheese, and we, like, master it. So, yeah. uh, Haitians call it yes. macaroni au gratin. And okay. we, we, we put crab in it. So it's a big, classic baked mac and cheese and with ziti, and then we put crab meat in it, and that's our biggest side. Like, we wouldn't even be here without our crab mac and cheese. I'm yeah. trying to tell you what I know with my with my with my, my whole heart. You heard me. <laughs> <laughs> that Creole fried chicken sandwich. But they don't know about that. Those plantain mm -hmm. chips mm -hmm. and that <laughs> avocado dip. I'll be like, can you put a little bit more chips in <laughs> yes, it? I'll be like, can you put a few? She'll, yeah. she'll open the top of it, right, Peter? Right, right. And I'll be like, can you put a little bit more uh, chips in it? She'll be like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll be like, bless you. See, yeah, see the plantain indeed. chips, are, you know why I like them, especially in that sandwich. When you finish the sandwich, like 15 minutes later, you're still snacking on yes. chips. Yes. Ah. That's, that's that key. And it's and it's not salty. Mm -hmm. It's not sweet. Mm -hmm. It's just like the perfect blend mm -hmm. of like flavors. And then you would never think about the avocado like dipping sauce. You know what I'm saying? But it's yeah. so refreshing. Yeah. A lot of people like to call it guacamole, but it ain't no. Guacamole. No, <laughs> it ain't guacamole. It's, no, guacamole. and it's so fresh. And it's like like a summer day, a spring day, even a day like today. It's just it's very light, and it's just yo. Please go and support. So let me. So let's talk about this chopped uh, experience oh, yeah. for a second. Okay. You know, so let's let the people know what chopped is in your journey as as a culinary master. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, cause I mean, you're being really modest. Well, starting as a baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, I've always one of my greatest things assets about cooking for myself is I'd love to go into a pantry and you know just create dishes. Wow. And I've been doing that since a child, you know. So that chopped kind of ide ideology was always in my head already. Mm. Um, 
I started to apply actually way, way long ago, right when I left college, but I never actually finished applying. But recently, or, or I should say about two years ago, um, you know, one of the scouts came out to the uh, St. Rock Market and they were asking people around and they automatically just recruited us. And from there, I mean, we had a couple of accolades and things before that that were really getting, helping getting our name out, which was a great asset to getting us on the show. Um, but from there, you know, we did two interviews and six months later I was on the show. And wow. I couldn't tell anybody. Like, we couldn't say anything to anybody. So it was wow. a big secret. Uh, they flew me out to New York. I started the show at 7.30, which is really funny because I didn't even start the show. Of course, I'm the one who was there an hour late. You can tell the story. Oh, yeah. I was, was going to hop in real quick. Um, so it's 5 a.m., I believe, in New Orleans. Charlie's in New York, and I receive a phone call at 5 a.m., um, from the producer of the show asking me where Charlie is. And I'm like calling him late. frantically for like, I think half an hour. Yeah, like, I, was, I don't even uh, know. We no, got security to go to his late. room. Yeah. And the guy's like, no one's in the room. And I'm like, oh my God, he's blowing it. Yeah. And then, like, <laughs> yeah. And then um, after like half an hour of doing that, and I'm like only talking to the producer, um, the next thing I get is a text from her like, um, oh, he just appeared. Um, thanks so much. Bye. And I was like, can I talk to him? <laughs> and I'm like, is okay. everything okay? And she was like, nah, actually, we're about to shoot, so thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and that was it. Like, he showed up half an hour late. I just, you know me, I just waited at the wrong Starbucks. It was supposed to be, like, Starbucks on 67th, and I was, like, on 69th, and I just waited at the wrong Starbucks and came in 45 minutes late. Yeah. And I still came. And he's still yeah. Yeah. Come on in now with that. Go. He was like, I that. killed it. I literally, did it. Literally, though, like, I walked in, and they put my chef coat on, and I was like, Literally right in the kitchen. Like, no other wow. people have tried to eat breakfast. I just put it on and I was just like, okay, get ready to open the box. I'm like, all right, okay, <laughs> all right, let's do this. My man, we're going under the pressure to say the least, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. what you do. It is what I do. Yeah. You're right. I mean, it was a little nerve wracking. I can't lie to you about that. It was a little nerve wracking, but um, it, was, it was a super, super dope experience. You know what I mean? And um, like, like they say, they give you 20 minutes on the first round. 30 minutes on the second round, 30 minutes on the third round, and it's just like right when you open the box, you see what you have, and you literally have 20 minutes. Wow. You know what I mean, ain't no, ain't no space between the time or nothing like that. That's how it really is. Wow. So uh, you, it takes talent to put something like that, and it's not easy. You know, and, you, and sometimes you just mess up. And, you know, <laughs> I did a fried chicken in my middle of the round, and of course, you know, I'm supposed to just eat, like ace my fried chicken. I fried it and then baked it to make sure. And it still came out a little under, but they ain't say nothing about it. So That's know. right. They ain't say nothing. It was still good. <laughs> it was still good. It was still good. Still, you know still what I'm the saying? Best dish, you know? yeah. I shouldn't even talk yeah. about cooking. I'm undercooking chicken. Don't come to my restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it has to be like a very rewarding experience um, to know that so many people apply mm -hmm. and so many people like get on and don't get to the round of champions. You know, you so know, the funny thing about it is like they tell you like the way you know a person lost. Like I was telling her, if, if I get her, if she got a call at ten a.m., that means that I got caught first round. Like mm. I was like, I am definitely not gonna give her a call at ten. If I give her a call at like noon, then I got the second round. Or if I give her a call at seven, then I got to the third round, but I lost. But if I give her a call late at night, like eight a.m., nine a.m., that means I went through the whole thing. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah sure that's was, exciting. Yeah, yeah, sure as well, man. We, I, I, I called it really late at night. It was a really long day. I can't tell you. It was real, but it it was dope. Like you know, like you're saying, like just being winning. And I knew, like I said, I went in and telling everybody, like I'm not gonna lose. There's yeah. no way. I cannot. No it's way. Not I'm not gonna look, get out of leave there a loser. So no you went way. in with the mindset of just like I'm about to just kill this yeah, you game. Going into like, existence. Yeah. He yeah. Did. Yeah. He, he did. did. I was like, I can't. I can't lose. You know, it's no, no way, no way. I need my ten grand. You know. Yeah. yeah. You got stuff to do. I got stuff to mm -hmm. got bills to pay. You know. So let me ask you this: Did you did you do any Haitian influence dishes on, on the show? Oh yeah, most. Definitely. Were you able to flip? Um, so uh, I wish I wish the radio can see the picture of what you know um, how I was dressed. I had a I had a bandana with a Haitian flag on it, so yeah, I definitely yeah. was representing off the spot. Um, and then after <laughs> that, um, every dish had something that's like referencing Haiti. You know, wow. um, I, especially like the second dish had pickles, which is a Haitian relish. Mm. Like, if you're Haitian, you know Pickles, and if you're not Haitian, Pickles is, like, one of the first Haitian items that you'll, besides Griot's Pickles, which is, a, like, a spicy relish made from cabbage, green onions, hot peppers, carrots, um, and then you put it on top of fried foods and makes everything taste good. That sounds neat. Right. We are going to Fratai oh, after yeah. this, family. Yeah. If yeah, you yeah, want to join much. us, we are definitely going to be over oh, that yeah. way at St. Rock Market. Oh, join yeah. us over that way. Please do. As I want some Pickles. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> come grab it. 
Um, even in the third dish, it was um, it was dessert, and we did, I did a they gave me pound cake, um, kefir, kefir, or kefir, whatever you want to call it, which is like a watery, really sour yogurt. Um, they also gave me uh, pineapple, uh, sorry, papayas and kiwis, and I, I it, it just automatically like reminded me of a Haitian dessert. So mm. I took the pound cake and I hollowed it and I stuffed it with um, the papayas, dried mangoes, and kiwis. I blended it all together, added a little bit of mustard for like savoriness, and you put it in the cake. And then I made a sauce with the kefir, like the yogurt kind of item. Um, I added a little almond extract in there. Um, I think a little brandy and a little bit of lime, and that was just like a sauce with a little bit of charred coconut on top, and it was a one. Right He's a food chemist. You see that? Huh? Yeah. He's in here like dicing it up, like, and yeah, that sounds like chemistry. Right like, what? How do you know it's gonna taste good? I mean, that's 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 you know the talent, I guess, in it. You know, exactly. chefs know what they what they build menus without you know understanding the food concepts yet, and then they can go into the kitchen and actually start putting it together and actually tasting, but. I think that's one of the great things I, I can do very well is just understanding flavors without actually putting them together. So you didn't become a chef. You were born a chef. Yeah. I think so. And yeah. Chop recognized it. Yeah. That's yeah. what it was. So they, they didn't make you who yeah. you were, right? Yeah. 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 So let me ask you this question, man. How far back in ancestry you go back with this cooking? Who who, who used to cook, man? Who, when you when oh, you were man. that baby, that's when you started to tell your story, man? That's who, a good question. Um, both my mother and father. So my mother was just like the traditional Haitian cook. Everything she cooked was just amazing, you know. Gotcha. Super Haitian, doesn't mess up anything ever. Um, and my father was a chef at Marriott. For him. He worked there for about 20, 22 years. So he, I got a lot of the American influences. Gotcha. Um, and we do omelets at our place mm-hmm. right now for breakfast. And that's only because my father was like yeah. super omelet he chef when he started. That. And that's, that's what he did a lot. <laughs> And so, you know, that's kind of like the ode to my father. Cause, and I loved omelets as a kid. So, Who don't? So, you know what I mean? Yeah, right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, Especially yeah, good do, omelets. Yeah, we do a lot. We have the best omelets in town, by the way. I'm going to just tell you that. If you like omelets, guarantee you're going to love omelets. So, so how long your breakfast menu is open? Uh, we do very long, actually, from 8 to 2 every day. Word. Yeah, so you come in no matter what time you get up, unless you're getting up after 2, then I don't know what you're doing for lunch. <laughs> you, you're getting up just in time for lunch. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, Y'all got them covered as well if yeah. you want to get some lunch. Mm-hmm. Yes, it did, man. I don't know. So we got a professional chef in here, and then I'm a professional eater. You, you got that? Yeah, you I'm, that I'm a taste tester. You can taste test. Mm. My ancestry goes to my daddy saying, <laughs> "I'm gonna take the poison out." Really? He go? He gonna be the first one? Yeah, that it? he's gonna be the first one. Every dish my mama make, he said, "Let me take that poison out, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me like get that, that poison like out there for you." Like so I learned that's where my ancestry lies. So you come from a long line. Of I come from a long line testers. of taste testers. There you go. Well, my, my, let me not say that my people can cook too, but you know, I just prefer to eat. Mm-hmm. So we thank you. <laughs> my pleasure, my pleasure. I, I, I thank you for what I mean, you do because that's it's, another thing I like to watch people eat. So, you know, especially enjoying the food. It's very. It's the most important part about it. You got to like it. And I, I want to so, mention, maybe we could talk about it a little bit more after mm-hmm. the, we come back from the break in the next one, but I, I, I do want to kind of take the conversation in a different direction as such because uh, a lot of people understand that uh, they, they don't really get a chance to experience different people's culture a lot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? People okay. tend to rock with important. who they rock with. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when they hear different things, Haitian culture and things like that, it's, it's it's typically from a source that doesn't know how to appreciate it fully. Yeah, you know, touching up on good topics. Right, right. right. We're going to deal with it a little. We got some yeah. time left, you know. So they, they, they tend to deal with it from a negative perspective and yeah. have a, yeah. a negative, you know, uh, understanding yeah, give it to them, right? They have a lot mm-hmm. to say about that. So yeah. so if, if people in the community already feel like you can't trust some of the sources that give us information, you know, yeah. this is a way that we can actually come and support the, the, the goodness of what, you know, the mm-hmm. culture really represents, man. Mm-hmm. So I want everybody in the listening audience to take time out of their schedule to come and actually visit you, man, to see firsthand what this, this Haitian culture and the food and things like that is really all about, man. Mm-hmm. Of course. You know what I mean? Yeah, but please yeah. touch on, you know what I'm saying? You can, yeah. you can take it in the direction you want to. Yeah. Because it's a real action-oriented, intelligent listening audience that we're speaking yeah, to. Yeah, right yeah, now, yeah, you know? I see that. I see that. Yeah, yeah. So deal I'll with it. Go ahead right now? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, um, you know, you should take it out of while. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think about this one a lot, actually. Yeah. Um, okay. I think one of the main things that we tried to focus on when we opened up was how to make our food approachable. Mm-hmm. Um, on top of our mission to reintroduce Haitian culture to the city, like um, it's only natural that we would bring Haitian food here because the city is so deeply rooted in Haitian culture. Mm-hmm. Um, we already see that this, the elements are all there. Like you have the pork, the rice, the beans, the sauce creole. It's the exact same sauce creole that New Orleanians make. 
Um, so with that mission in mind of like reintroducing this part of um, New Orleans history with food, we also wanted to make it um, approachable and affordable. Um, like you said, a lot of people look at our menu and they exotify it. But mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is that um, a lot of New Orleanians actually grew up with um, the same elements in their food. Mm -hmm. This is kind of like the ancestor of New Orleanian food. So we're trying to, um, you know, offer things like the crab mac and cheese and the fried chicken to, to sort of let these people be more comfortable trying out our food, you know, and mm -hmm. approach us. And then once they see that, you know, oh, this isn't like, you know, totally bizarre or weird, this is actually really good and they like it, then they can sort of like venture out and try some more traditional Haitian dishes like the griot, which is the crispy pork plate, very traditional to Haitian cuisine. Um, the Haitian smothered greens, which is otherwise known as legumes, um, another very traditional Haitian dish. Um, so I think that's actually one of our biggest um, intentions with being in the market is how to get local people reintroduced to that part of their history mm -hmm. um, and, you know, get to try some different food, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, yeah no, no, yes, it is. Yeah. No, it is. It's is, no my <laughs> guess. I guess. It, def it definitely is. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. it's super important. Ooh. No, it is it is super important. They're about to choke each other over here with yeah. their cords. Yeah. So we're going to kind of separate these cords real quick, family. But make sure that you go out and support. This is a beautiful opportunity, like like Baba said, for us to begin to dispel those myths. Right. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Because with, with everything, especially with our, um, as, the, as people say, the one not to be mentioned in, in the White House, making the most recent comments mm -hmm. um, about, you know, our brothers and sisters over there in Haiti and our other countries over there, our other African nations. Um, it's just a great opportunity for us to begin how to heal. And like people say, music does all, you know, heals all things. Food does too. Mm -hmm. You know, because once you get to talking and sitting at the table with mm -hmm. some... Uh, with some good greens and some good <laughs> rice, and if you if you bring in that fried chicken Creole, and then if you come in with that uh -huh. that um, that <laughs> mac, good. yeah, that mac and cheese with that Eel. crab meat in it, you know Eel. what I'm saying? If you bring in all that stuff, I, I can't see who ain't gonna be happy, <laughs> you know, sitting at the table and, and willing to have that conversation uh -huh. about you know our similarities per se, our differences, because yeah. we focus a lot on our differences. So, family, when you come back, don't y'all go nowhere. We are definitely about to get... What's the address before we go any further? 2381 St. Claude, New Orleans, Louisiana, St. Rock Market, Free Thai, Haitian food. Come check us out. And we're online and social media as well at Free Thai Nola, F-R-I-T-A-I-N-O-L-A. That's right, family. So, we're going to be able to come back and give you that address again and that place. But for my locals, y'all already know where it's at. It's right across the street from the Healing Center, right next to Raleigh's. Y'all already know how we rock. <laughs> I already know. So, family, don't you go anywhere. Y'all stay tuned as we begin to celebrate and continue to celebrate and highlight one of our very own Chopped winner, Brother Charlie Pierre, owner of Fritai, a Haitian-based restaurant located right here in this beautiful city of New Orleans. Y'all stay tuned. I think they cut the air on. I was trying to cut the air on for us. Oh, okay. That's why I was looking for somebody... And then I just kind of adjusted the camera. Word, word. It was that. I was about to be like... Yeah, if you want to dive and say some some stuff, some you know what I mean, get yeah. in a little bit, but right. say your piece because I right. know it, you know. What about that president? Right, right, right. Yeah. We, we don't call him by name around these yeah. points. No, no, I just clown. said that yeah. person. He ain't even a president. Yeah, he a clown. So for real, man, if you want to vent a little bit and, right. and, and say your piece, by all, all right. this this the platform to do it. Cool. You know what I mean? Cool. Yeah, no if, if 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 this not the oldest uh, black radio station in, in the nation, it definitely is in the state. You know what I'm wow. saying? So we got a strong platform, man. They had a couple of format trends. Like it, it was a a gospel station at one time. You know what I'm saying? But for the vast majority of it, it's been a a, a a talk radio format. You dig? And it used to be extremely relevant in the black community. You know, with technology and advancement of it. Yeah. You know, people had other outlets to kind of go to. But yeah. at one time, this was the spot. To get information to show what we're trying to do and what the general manager is trying to do is to get that younger audience again to get it to be a social you know a platform to get our right. messages of empowerment out to our people man so okay. a lot of people just don't know much about the haitian culture they know your boy crazy for saying what he said yeah, yeah. but you know what i'm saying but they don't really understand the value yeah that y'all yeah, bring to the table money. man yeah, so yeah. yeah 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 most definitely we can touch yeah. Oh, 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 yeah.
Yeah, Shadow Special. Yeah, doing for real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it ain't for it all, man. I'm going there and i just be like, yo, hey, can I get the chick? Yeah. <laughs> you don't even have to say it. You have to call it the Kendra Joy. Can I get an order, Kendra Joy, please? Yeah, we should have. You I'm know, just right? we had the time. I know, saying. if we didn't come, if we came from work, what about you? Yeah, it's okay. What we As we begin to kind of like solidify our remote shows, uh-huh. um, Mr. Slade was just like, you know, uh, we should have had a, a kitchen in house so they could have done their thing in house. So as we begin to solidify our remote shows, we would love to come over that way. Yeah, so can, you know, totally. Figure out how to do the best way. Yeah. Can't get smell a vision, but if we could, yeah. man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. television's the, the closest way, I guess. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's still cool though. I think people should like it's great food and great customer service. So, yeah, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, we're just trying to, you know. Like you said, like we were saying, just provide for the community mm-hmm. while making money for ourselves and paying our bills, yeah. you know, making yeah. everybody happy, you know. That's how we bought it, man. Everybody got to have something to support each other with, you <laughs> know what I mean? We can't get away from that, man. Everybody has to survive, you uh-huh. know. Uh-huh. Most definitely. You think so? Not everybody, no. I'm just I'm lying. joking. I'm just I ain't mean everybody. Some people don't need to survive. You get rid of a few I'm folks, just, you know what I mean? I'm just joking. Just stop eating. Yeah, just stop breathing, stop eating. No, do do us a favor, you know? I, I'm excited. I'm, I'm always excited when I go, and I have an extra few dollars that I can spare. Hmm. We back on? Yeah, we live. Did you want to come closer so I, like, I'm not the only one? There we go. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's shift. Yeah. And I don't feel, like it's all you know, on me and I'm, the mic go you. in. The mic go in and out and slide. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Y'all ain't gonna hear it yeah. at all, man. So that's please. That's good. Yeah, that's good. We all took yeah. baths except for Peter. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Peter said it earlier in the show. All right, fam. We gonna just do this quick one. All right. You ready? In. Come get a Howard, bro. Better Come get her. My brother's gonna be on the show tomorrow. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> I am too, man. Looking forward to hearing from you, dude. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that Angela Bassett mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Tina Turner. Oh yeah, yeah. You kind of look like it. Mm-hmm. Welcome back, fellas. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yo, we just want to say thank you so much for tuning in to the new show here on WBOK with your favorite gullah gal right here, Kendra Joy. And the show is called What Peter on on the, on the move. <laughs> yeah, we on the move. It ain't no stopping us. Give him the want, 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 please. For it's, what? It's no, so no, Jan, so no, but no, nah, no, nah, she tripping, man. So, so indeed, family, but if you are listening, that means that your friend is not listening. I need you to tune in live to us at www.wbok1230am.com. Or also, family, you can always download that beautiful app, WBOK1230am. It's going to look a little like this. What's behind us from our Facebook, Facebook listeners? Um, Make sure you do that Google Play or iPhone. And if you have any questions for the wonderful guest that we have on today as he discusses about his experience on Chopped and the beautiful restaurant that he has in the new St. Rock Market, please feel free to give us a call at 504-260-9265. That is 504-260-9265. And for those of you guys who have just tuned in with us today, guess what, y'all? It is Village Talk Thursdays. Just a wonderful extension of the community bulletin board with my favorite co-host right here, my favorite brother. Oh, and you talked about me so bad, now you're trying to make it up, huh? You know you're my guy. I know. Oh, you are my oh, guy. Oh, man, you're going to make me cry. Oh, Lord. Anyway. We got some good guests in the house tonight. We do. I mean, we this afternoon. I'm so thankful for amazing guests today. And what we are doing today, family, is we are highlighting one of our very own. Um, he is one of, one of the CHOP winners. Um, and for those of you guys who don't know what Chopped is, it's one of the food network shows that they have where they showcase their talents with different ingredients that they just get as soon as they walk through the door. And so he is one of those winners. And he also, he and his partner also own a restaurant here in the city called Fratai. And so that is a, an amazing restaurant. They know me by name over there. And um, they just prepare the dish well, when I come just a through. Chicken sandwich lady. I am the chicken <laughs> sandwich lady over there at Fratai, and I'm always supporting and, and get and trying to send other people over there as much as I possibly can, um, who are just looking for some really solid food. So we want to say thank you, thank you for thank doing you. what you do. And so, Pete, I'm gonna let you take it away because you've been having some interesting, some beautiful conversations with my with my beautiful people over there. Right, right, right. Because, like I said, man, you know. I, I went. I went to a, a, a high school, all all black males, right? It's a high school, so at some point you just gotta get some stuff off your chest. You know what I mean? Somebody mm-hmm. say something about you, you gonna have to 
stand mm-hmm. your ground and speak your peace. You know what I'm saying? So we definitely want to give you an opportunity to kind of clear up the air of some of the stuff that is float through the areas right now about your people, your culture, you know what I'm saying, and and and, and, and some of the derogatory statements that's being made. Say think, your peace, uh, brother. You know, uh, Haiti's a beautiful country. I mean, I, there ain't much more to say besides that. I mean, like, you know, everything else that becomes through the airs, you know, even though... We have a lot of issues going on. I mean, our, our core ideals, our core concept is very strong. You know, our culture is super, super strong, mm-hmm. and it's it's a it's a brotherly sisterly thing, especially with New Orleans. It's, you yeah. can see so many things that are identical to this country, to this city specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a thing that Eva says a lot, or I got from her actually, is like the saying that you know, uh, New Orleans is not the southernmost American city, but the northernmost Caribbean city. <laughs> and that's one of the biggest reasons I live here, you know, because uh, I don't want to go as, as close to the Caribbean as I can without getting to Haiti yet. You know what I mean? Um, but that that's country itself has amazing food, amazing culture, and there's so much that I need to learn. And I'm, I'm going back there in a few months to just, you know, keep, keep, keep understanding more and more and more about, you know, my, my family, my ancestors, you know, what my grandparents did. But... Um, it, it's such an amazing place, you know. You know, clear water is amazing food. And some of the difficult, um, and some of the difficulties that y'all face could be explained. You know, this country he has a lot of hands in, in, in creating the the devastation that exists over there. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Uh-huh. But so, I definitely, I'm glad that we had an opportunity to have you come on as a ambassador of sorts. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, and whenever anything happens, you know, the, the people in the U.S. itself are, are, are great to Haitians and Haitians love Americans in, in turn, you know what I mean? When disasters happen, so much aid is given, even though, you know, a lot of them went missing, but what's the most important thing is that what people were actually giving a lot. Right. Um, right. And so we, we never forget that, and that's why when we come here, we come to the U.S., and my, my parents came here, they worked their asses off because they know, you know, that's what's going to make them get there, you know, just right. like all other immigrants, just like, you know, Mexicans or people coming from Europe or Asia, they know when they get here, you know, they're going to really work. Right, um, and that that should be the most important thing, and that's what being American is. You know, there's no core ideal American really. So American is just everything. Dig it, dig it, dig it. Definitely dig it. Well, we have a phone call. Real, we're, we're gonna ask Brother Keith to join us on the line real quick. Brothers and sisters, good Thursday afternoon to you. Hey, thanks. I Give really thanks. I don't have a question for the brother, but can I get his opinion on? It's about food, okay? Yeah. Now listen to this. Mm-hmm. I have been fully thrown with this encyclopedia. It's an eye for Indian for the native tribes here. They had a colorful map of all the tribes. Mm-hmm. And they had all the food items that in a lot of tribes was growing. Now before our people was brought here to the big broken islands, the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Listen to you. Listen to this. All the vegetables, all the fruits you can imagine, except for a pineapple, nuts and fruits, lemon, lime, and yogurt. The brother mentioned yogurt. Mm-hmm. Greens, cabbage, mm-hmm. all the like of beans, mm-hmm. yam, peanuts, all kinds of nuts, coffee, even tea. All these things we cherish in America was already eaten in Africa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rice. Don't talk about the rice, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. You know about yeah, I know about that. Gullah people. You, you from North Carolina, right? South Carolina, baby. But it's good I mean, though. I'm Carolina, baby. I think that that's it. Rice, even Brussels sprouts, the miniature cabbages, string beans, all kinds of beans. You know, that's the whole. Okay. All right. I, I, I mean, I think that's a, yeah, yeah, I, I understand, I mean, it's, But, but Keith, this brother got it all in his DNA. This, this brother got some of the recipes in his no, DNA, Big Keith. Hey, 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 I, I completely understand what, where you're coming from. Yep. Yep. Yep.
Okay, thank you. 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 A lot of stuff came. We came from Africa, you know what I mean? We even bring the food. We're even more important than the food itself. We're the human beings who actually came. So we brought so much yeah. more. We brought the food, the music, you know what I mean? So much more. Our, our side of our intelligence, you know, so much, so much came from there, you know? Yeah. So it, you can't even start or stop. Like, there's no definitive line of, like, the amount of influence that Africans have on this country, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you can't even gauge that because it's it's just everywhere, you know. And we already know like everything we do here in New Orleans. I don't know if you're from New Orleans, but you can walk down the street and you hear a drum, and that drum sounds African. Ooh, you know, you, it you, is you African. smell fruit and it smells yeah. African. I don't know everything you do. The way people dress still has the African touch to it. You know yeah. what I mean? And twerking, that's African. Yes. You know, so I mean, no, you know what I mean? This, it's, it's a fertility have, dance. Yeah, yeah, but you at the same rock market, bro. It's like it's 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 putting your value, you know your value. Uh -huh. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? You know what you bring to it. And we thank you for your culinary mastery, bro, and your, right. you know what I'm saying, your, your skill sets and your gifts that you share with us as a community. But we yeah, appreciate yeah. it. I mean, that's, that's, that's our, like we said, that's our goal. Man. We're here to provide for the community and, and create like a more comfortable space for everybody. Give us hours of operation one more time, direction. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 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 Social media, we need all of that. We need all, all of that. that. So again, I'm Charlie Pierre, and I'm here with Eva Chiretta, and we're the owners of Free Thai at the Saint Rock Market. That's 2381 Saint Claude in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, you can catch us on social media. We're always telling you specials and news and, um, and such. That's F R I T A I N O L A. So Free Thai Nola. Um, yeah, and that's us. Yeah. Oh, I was operation. Uh, we open at 9 a.m. and close at 10 p.m. on weekdays, and we close at 11 p.m. on. Um, well, weekend as well. No excuse, family. Y'all know we get up late sometimes. No excuse. So we need to make sure we go out there and support our brother and our sister out there and their endeavors. And what we do on this show is we just want to say thank you for being a friend. And the way we take it out is you got to bounce it out. Come on. Now, yeah, Eva, you got to dance. Yeah, I'm ready now. She's ready now. Right. Right. Come on. She ready now. Now you got to dance. And so, family, you all know how we do it on this beautiful show. We want to say thank our guests so much. Please make sure that you support our minority-owned businesses here in the city of New Orleans. You already know where to find them on St. Rock Market Street, one of our very own chopped winner, Brother Charlie Pierre. We want to make sure that we show him some love. We don't focus on minority businesses enough, people. By the way, y'all need to stop going to people who don't support you. I'm just telling you, like, minority businesses are super important to support. Just start looking at whoever you're going to. I'm not even going to name names, but... Understand that the places you're going to, they ain't supported by black people. You shouldn't be supporting them. Oh, there Lord. So guess Our what, brother. family? That's the ending line of this particular show. Yeah, the day, man. <laughs> so we just want to say thank you so much. Tune in for tomorrow. We have family first. We got brother. We got the doctor, Howard Conyers, rocket scientist up there of NASA, who's going to come in and talk to us about just everything. So you do not want to miss tomorrow's show. So we just want to say thank you so much. Come on, Peter. Let's edit out. We say thank you so much, family. Thank you. Thank you, family. Yeah, thank you. And we will see you tomorrow same time same place remember that you are light hug somebody family Word. we out peace